Hello, I'm Meredith Despens with NAREIT, and I'm here at REIT Week 2009 with Scott Crow. Scott is Senior Vice President with Cohen and Steers and is the Portfolio Manager for a number of their global and international portfolio strategies. Why is it important for investors to consider investment in global markets, gl the global real estate markets? Uh, well, global real estate markets give you access to some of the most exciting uh, investment opportunities around the world. Uh, particularly uh, in, in some of the developing economies. Uh, there's really no other way to get exposure to these investment opportunities apart from the public markets. Uh, also, we think that REITs globally are, are very cheap. Uh, we think they've discounted in a lot of the downturn uh, that we expect to see in the direct real estate market, and it's a very good entry point for investors uh, right now. Scott, here in the United States, commercial real estate has undergone a repricing. It appears that the public markets are now anticipating rebound opportunity in the commercial real estate market, whereas measures of commercial real estate returns in the private markets are expected to continue to decline. Is there a similarity between that pattern outside the U.S.? It is completely usual for the listed market to turn down before the private market and then turn up before the private market. And it's usual because REITs are liquid. They are forward-looking and they transmit and reflect information much more quickly than the direct property market. Now what that means is, I think, as you said, in 2007 the REIT market peaked and actually started going down. So there's a lot of talk out there about commercial real estate being the next shooter drop. That's old news to us. We were, we were in a bear market for two years before people started talking about that. And in fact the REITs are actually reflecting that upturn you were talking about. And so I think we'll see commercial real estate prices start to bottom in the next sort of 12 months uh, towards the, 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 the middle of next year and back half of next year. And it's actually going to provide the REITs a lot of opportunity. You mentioned the, the recapitalization that's going on here in the domestic market in the U.S. And, and I think that that's been an important part of the, the, the stabilization, the recovery that we've seen in REIT prices here. Um, again, are there similarities? Can we expect to see that going on outside the U.S. as well, this recapitalization? Well, we, we, we saw it actually before the U.S. REIT market. Australia, Singapore and the U.K. all recapitalized even before the U.S. REIT market did. Uh, there's still some areas where that's an ongoing exercise and continental Europe and Japan are the two areas where I'd point to. We're actually starting to see that uh, happen right now. So it's a, it's a global problem. Leverage has been a global problem uh, apart from some markets and Ho Hong Kong is one market where uh, they learnt their lesson after the Asia crisis. Uh, but it's a global deleveraging process. Uh, and, you know, as you said, it's, it's been a large part of the reason why people have had the confidence to invest back into the sector because no one was ever arguing about the fact there was value, that the REITs were cheap. What they were arguing about was whether or not the REITs would have access to capital and actually could survive the cycle. Now the REITs have raised enough money to really withstand current credit market conditions, so with no improvement in credit market conditions until 2012, and we think that's a very good liquidity position to be in.